Well, I've been getting that question, question a lot. And, and to be honest with you, you know, um, our, our staff and our players, you know, we're, we're doing a really good job so far this year. But we prepare the same way for every game. Um, you know, you're, you're always going to have players um, that are from certain areas of, of, of the country that have relationships with other players and other staffs or coaches that have relationships with other staffs. That's pretty common. I guess a little bit different when you have a, a former head coach of the team you're fixing to play so new from being there. But, uh, you know, it's been business as usual. Like I said, it's it's been going on eight or nine months now. Both sides obviously have moved on. And, and I definitely don't have any uh, ill will toward um, – toward the University of Louisiana, and um, they were very good to me for a long time, and we had a great run there, and very proud of the accomplishments that we had, and, and I know the players there, and I know coming here is going to mean a lot to a lot of those guys, because we recruited the state of Mississippi very heavily, and so you've got some guys, uh, Jamarcus Bradley, for one, right down the road from Ackerman, will be playing in a stadium that he dreamed about playing in probably his whole life, and so they're going to want to come in here and want to play well, and and uh, they've got some some really good players, and, uh, and it's, it's going to be a challenge. But we're we've had maybe one of our best days of practice today, and, and that was great to see. And hopefully we can uh, continue to improve each week. That's what it's all about right now for us. Is just taking it one play, one day, uh, one game at a time. And and uh, if we can do that, I think some good things are ahead for us. You got any text messages from any players this week? You know, no, no, no. Uh, I think both sides are are so busy preparing and that everybody's too busy to worry about all that. And I'm sure, you know, if I get the opportunity to, I'd love to, to after the game, maybe hug up some of those guys. But uh, like I said, it's we both have a job to do. We both have a game to play. And, and we have to put all that aside for this game, that's for sure. And so, but anxious to play. And it'll be good to see some friends and uh, some friends that will be coming up for the game, uh, you know, from, from Lafayette. Y'all you know, had a role in there for four or five years. How do you kind of look back on – what you accomplished there? Yeah, I was asked that this week by, by one of the local papers there, you know, and we had the four-year best run in school history, and at the time we had the best four-year run in Sunbelt Conference history, and, and especially uh, with winning the four straight bowl games, 36 games in four years, and and uh, so we had a, had a really good run. Disappointing that it ended sort of the way it did. I think anybody would be disappointed. But uh, you know what, though? I, I couldn't be more pleased with where I landed because, you know, in college football, most of the times you go where the job takes you. Uh, I came to a place that I love and uh, grew up cheering for. I don't know how many Division I coaches can say that they're actually at a place they grew up cheering for in the stadium uh, since they were uh, knee-high to a grasshopper. And so that, that's me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Very appreciative of Coach Morehead for giving me this opportunity. And I'm just working hard every day to try to help him achieve his vision for this program. How much have you helped with his with the scout for this game, just being so familiar with their personnel? You know, that's probably the main thing I, I can probably bring to this game plan because, you know, this is Coach Morehead's offense. And he's, you know, going to put together the plan that he wants. And so, obviously, uh, I, I can help with the, with the personnel. Now, they've got some new personnel that they've done a good job recruiting and bringing some guys in that's going to, uh, be a big asset to them, and but for the you know uh, for the remaining players that were there, I definitely uh, have a good I think a good thermometer for those guys. And like I said, they've got a talented team and a lot of speed and a lot of guys that are going to be excited to to play in Davis Wade Stadium on Saturday. Your guys have done a good job of getting yards after the catch. How much did y'all kind of focus on that, especially Justin? I mean, he's you know, a lot of yak yards. we really have, and that's the thing that we have preached in our position. It's the first thing we're going to be is we're going to be physical. We're going to be tough, and we're going to be physical at the tight end position. But then when we get our hands on the ball, we want to make plays. And you know what? The ball has found us a little bit. And to be honest with you, we've been targeted way more times than than what we've uh, what we've caught. And uh, so I think we still want to uh, even continue getting more balls. And uh, but our guys are working hard. I really like our group, and we're deep, and uh, they're playing hard right now. Dante Jones is a guy that has caught a couple of balls so far this season. How promising is it to see a young guy like that making plays? You know what? That's been great to see because you know he's he's worked hard. And now he's finally getting his opportunity, and 
he, in the last two weeks, he's made two explosive plays. And uh, I think both catches that he's made in the game, both were explosives, one for about 35 yards and one for a touchdown. And so he's doing some good things. And, and like I said, we've got some depth. But Justin, Farad, both those guys are, are battling. And they're really sharing time right now. Really, they're like co-starters. And so I'm very fortunate to have such a good group of guys in my room. Where do you see as far as, I know you still got a couple more games before the red shirt rule kicks in, but as far as Brad and, and Spivey? You know, that's that was a big point of conversation for our staff, for, really for everybody on the team. And we have a uh, detailed plan that Coach Moorhead has put in place of guys that we want to get uh, four games under their belt. We've got a, a list of guys that we're probably going to go ahead and play. And, and uh, we would like to redshirt both of those guys if we could. And so that's the plan with those guys moving forward. We do want to redshirt them. Um, you never know if situation as the season goes along will we'll dictate that or allow that, but that's the plan moving forward because we're so deep. You touched on being here, but how fun is it before and now being so close to your hometown? Well, that, that's pretty neat. You know, <laughs> we're 30 minutes down the road from my hometown, and, uh, you know, I've got so many friends in this area. and. Went to Winston Academy right down the road, and uh, you know we used to play Starfall Academy over here. And man, I you know, basically lived in Starfall half the time because we had to come over here to go to the movie. Or uh, we played Starfall Academy, you know, in all sports. And so, and then obviously on Saturdays I was in Davis Wade Stadium watching John Bond, or I was in the haunt watching Jeff Malone. Well, you know, one of the two I was here, and then watching the baseball games when Coach Polk coach. And so, it's it's pretty neat being in a place that you care about and. Uh, and I grew up watching, to say the least. You've been on that other sideline, bringing a, a, a Sun Belt team into an SEC stadium. What's that like? You just, what's the mentality of a team? Well, you know, they're going to have a chip on their shoulder. I know that's the thing that we always try to say with our guys is, you know, uh, you always remind them, hey, you know, they didn't recruit you, and which they recruited some, but we always say, they didn't recruit you, let's go show them that they really messed up, made a mistake that they should have. And so you sort of, those guys go come in here with a chip on their shoulder, that's for sure. And, uh, and we went to Texas A&M last year, and uh, they were ahead of Texas A&M 21-14 at halftime. So, you know, you've got to come out and you've got to play. And, uh, and because we don't, they've got the talent to really give us, give us a heck of a game. And so we've got to make sure we're prepared and ready to play for these guys. Trey was a big part of that game at, at A&M, and he played well in a lot of big games while, while you were there. What, what makes him kind of rise to – Trey, Trey Regis? Yeah. What yeah. Kind of makes him rise to these That, that guy's at one heck of a running back. And, uh, you know, he's physical, he's strong, and uh, it's important to him. And he's, he's tough. You know, I like tough teams. I like tough players. He's tough. And so uh, that's one thing I loved about him. And they've got a lot of tough players, a lot of, a lot of good kids on that team. And, and like I said, it's going to be a, a big challenge for us. We've got to continue having a good week.